Hey, everybody. Welcome to an episode of ATC about those comments. Wow. I did this video here uh, entitled Mammy Bails Out a Murderer. So you basically have like these men committing crimes and here in the black community committing crimes. And these comments struck out is things that, you know, you've been saying for years and I just think it's worthy of conversation. So Millie Mango, she comments, I worked at the Milwaukee County Courthouse for five years and many grandmothers came in and put a second mortgage on the house to bail out their grandsons, not granddaughters, grandsons. I know a few attorneys and they practice criminal law. Same thing. I haven't heard about them putting a second mortgage on the house to put the grandson through college or to put the granddaughter through college or to start a business. This here is backwards economics, N-E, what some people back in the day called Negro economics, okay? You're not going to grow. You're at the knee. That's where you're going to say Negro economics. And it blows my mind. All the money, all the dollars spent on Dusty's. Another comment here says, uh, another person dead because of bail reform. Yeah, this man here, he was uh, reportedly let out, uh, made bail, and got out again, and I believe someone else was dead. Here we have from Miss Sincere, and the prior comment was uh, Noir Dren. Uh, Miss Sincere, she says, there are so many female enablers. That's why this is so bad, and I have to agree. The mammies are perpetuating the violence. They are the safety net for the Dusties. Dusties are another reason that we can't pass on generational wealth because the, the mammies have their backs. The mammies are there for them, big time. The mammies have their backs. The mammies are there for them big time. Again, mortgage their house. And then you wonder why, why are you 75 years old and you're still paying for a mortgage? Oh, well, things happen. What they're probably not telling you in some cases is that, yeah, the things that happen, they got a second mortgage to bail out the Dusties. And that is just, it, it blows my mind. Again, where are the stories of where you have them putting a mortgage in the house to start a business, a family business, put a kid through college. It doesn't happen. That just shows you, I keep telling you, there's no excuse for the Dusties. No excuse for the Dusties. Gwen E says, Mammy Supreme, and I so agree. Some of us, black women and men, are going to have to be left behind in order for the rest of us to move forward. They may even be family members. Let's all let that marinate. And that is so true. I was telling, um, and that one that I knew, I said, listen, girl, no one's going to want to do business with you or go into a business venture because you look up, you always have some mama or boyfriend drama and you cannot take money for a business and help out your mama. No one's trying to hear it. That's why you're having these meetings. People are getting to know you asking around and then you always bring up your personal life, not knowing they're you're pretty much saying, hey, you're a heck of a risk. You're not a good business partner. They're not trying to hear, oh, my boyfriend has a felony. He can't get a job. Let's hire him. No, people be looking at you crazy. But that I just want to share this, those few comments. This is another reason we cannot pass on generational wealth. Can't. The mammies, they will go to the ends of the earth for these dusties. Unbelievable. Hazel and I says, my vessel of life is like, this when it comes to my, my vessel of life is like this. When it comes to my drug dealing, child support dodging, no good brothers. But if I or my one child need anything, we have to fend for ourselves. That is so true. That is so true. I have seen it several times, several times. You have to fend for yourself. Exactly. And the mammies, well, man, the mammies, I tell you, I've seen them. It's like, wow, he's 37 years old and hasn't paid for a car yet. Mama bought the car. Mama pays insurance, paying the rent. you got to be kidding me. I'm not going to lie. My parents paid my brother's rent. Uh, he couldn't come home in time and obey the curfew. So they made a horrible mistake. Uh, when he was 17 and my dad was working and so my mother you know she wanted to try to all of a sudden you know i'm not gonna have this in my house and my dad got my brother an apartment at 17. i may have mentioned it total disaster they ended up paying his rent so he was like what 34 35 and he was like oh we're gonna pay my rent office and i was a few days late they're gonna charge my late fee 
You didn't know? No, we didn't know because my parents, they paid us rent to us like 34, 35 years old. Mm-hmm. Uh, me, I've never received help on rent. Never. Ever. But yeah. Hazel Nice, this is every black woman's mantra. My vessel of life is like this when it comes to, to dealing with my drug dealing, child support, dodge, and no good brothers. Oh, they're going to take care of them. They're going to take care of them. He, he, uh, he will have a place to sleep. In. You don't have to worry. A vehicle to drive, gasoline, insurance, they'll take care of it. But if I am my one child in anything, we have our we have to fend for ourselves. And that's why, ladies, I tell you, when you do make it to get on your own and they come up knocking, oh, don't even answer the door. Don't even answer the door. It's sad. It's so sad. Okay, the last comment. Can't get to them all, but thank you all so much for uh, commenting. Shalom M. She says, you are so right about the business stuff. And I never put it together until now. My family gave me so much help when I started my business and enjoyed watching me struggle. Yeah, they're hoping it's going to fail. Trust me, I know about that. Even have sabotaged me when pretending to help. It's really sad. Just crabs in a barrel. Exactly. And I've learned that. Sometimes uh, I've had with family and so-called friends starting a business. They'll stand back and just watch. Just watch. Why are you doing it that way? Why are you doing it that way? My thing is, why are you critiquing? Why are you so concerned right now? I mean, really? Why are you so concerned? Please tell me. Please tell me. No, they're critiquing because what they want to do is throw you off your game. They want you to think, oh my goodness, you're doing everything wrong. True crabs in a barrel. Crabs in a barrel. And last, Sarah Matthews states, yes, I notice even families enjoy uh, watching your struggle, but hate it when you get your stuff together so sad. That's exactly how they are. Exactly how they are. So when you do come up, the struggle is worth it. Guess what? They come knocking. Oh, you think you might get help little TT? Oh, you know, somebody needs to help. No, I don't have to do a darn thing because no one helped me. And that's how I feel sometimes. Sometimes it's just best to get away. Even in middle class families, they do this. I've seen it. In middle class families, they, they do this. I've seen it. They will bleed you dry. Been there, done that. That's why I stay away from some. I really do. Haven't talked in years. Let's keep it that way. Anyway, thanks for sharing. Uh, thanks for um, listening. But yeah, that's what I thought about that. She worked at the Milwaukee County Courthouse for five years, Millie Mango, and grandmothers come in putting the second mortgage on the house to bail out the grandson. And then she got to keep on working. The little check she does get on a second mortgage. What's he doing? He'll never pay it. He doesn't have to. So Dusty's? The one reason we cannot create generational wealth. Anyway, thanks for listening. Feel free to comment, like, subscribe, and share. And I'm out. Enjoy your weekend, ladies. Please, I beg of you, please stay safe.